Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Earth Tongue, and thank you for watching. Earth Tongue is a Earth slash Grass simulator, guys, and no, 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 I don't mean that horrible, pointless game, guys. For one, this game actually has mechanics. Uh, it's fun and it works well for that matter, guys. But no, let's get serious here. Uh, Earth Tongue is a what they call a vivarium simulator, guys. You are put in charge of an ecosystem and it's kind of like a god game. You have to kind of nudge it, tweak it, poke it in, in the right direction. Or you can be kind of like a total dick and just watch it blow up and burn. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of one of those ant toy hills that they used to give to kids and it would break and suddenly there's damn ants everywhere. It's like that, except it's a game, basically. <laughs> it released on Steam April 2015. It was developed and published by Eric Hornby, or otherwise known as Eric Hermit, or Eric Kermit, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. You can go ahead and get Earthsung on Steam for the first week's sale price of $4.24 or $4.99 normally. Now, you might be wondering why that lower price value, guys. Well, that price kind of reflects the overall simplicity and how much you're going to get out of Earth Tongue, guys. And I don't mean that in a mean or derisive way. It's just it's a very simplistic game. Musically, graphically, the overall game is simplistic. So that's why it has that point value. We're going to start off with the options menu, of course. I mean, even the options menu, for to a certain extent, is rather simplistic, guys. You have some sound sliders here, as you can see right there. Uh, the game does feature somewhat of a 1080p resolution, but I've had some is, is situations where once I hit the escape button, once you hit the full screen button, it shoots to your native resolution, which for me would be 1080p. Um, but then as soon as you hit the escape button in the game, it kind of just jacks up the resolution. So for the most part, you're going to want to keep it in that 1280 to 720 range. Uh, but it does in a way have that native 1080p resolution is just a little wonky. It takes a little finagling to get it to work. Uh, the game does feature steamy goodness in the form of steam cards. I'm not 100% sure about steam achievements. I don't think there is quite yet. That may change in the future. There's no controller support. You play the game completely with your uh, mouse, guys. And without further ado, we're going to hit the play button and actually start sh you know, showing you the game. Now, like I said, keep in mind that everything in the game is, is rather simplistic. There's complexities here. There is things that can be challenging, to say the least. Uh, but all in all, it's a very simplistic game. So now, this is my ecosystem, guys. This is everything you're seeing right here. And I will say that the game is rather very, very pretty. Once you get an actual ecosystem going here, it looks really, really pretty. Man, I got a lot of these wasps. I got to get rid of some of these wasps, man. Or I should say they're not wasps. They're, um, what are these guys called? Locusts, locusts. I got to rid of some of these locusts, man. There's just too many locusts. Jeez Louise. Um, so what you, your overall objective, of course, is to create an ecosystem, see it grow, and if, have as much biodiversity as possible between fungus and fungi and plants and creatures and bugs and all that good kind of stuff. And I've done a pretty successful job. This took me about more or less about 40 minutes or so to get going here. Uh, have all these different kinds of plants growing with the proper amount of nutrients forming. One thing to note, though, is that the blue rocks here, which is in front of you, um, are kind of randomly generated. So you can actually hit uh, the menu button here, hit new game, new world, and it'll actually randomly generate a new rocky terrain. So in a way, it does have replay value. It does have multiple boards, but at the same time, the background itself is always the exact same. Um, so just you know, keep that kind of thing in mind. So right now, geez Louise, these locusts are friggin' multiplying like crazy. That's bad. I gotta take care of this locust situation. Die, Lucas. I'm going to feed you to my carnivorous plants. So basically, let's let's talk about what you're looking at right here, guys. I'm going to hit the pause button again. On uh, Here on the left here, we have a thing that says interventions. I have 22 interventions. Well, that basically means I have 22 points to cause, uh, you know, activate certain powers, basically. Do certain things that I may want, which are all right here, basically, on the top of the screen. This is literally, you're going to have these powers from day one. You know, this isn't necessarily... There's no tutorial system. It's really just an experimentation game. Um, you're going to be kind of just left to figure out things for yourself. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially for this type of simulator. So as you can see here, we can import different kinds of bugs. And each of these bugs are all listed in the research journal right here. So there's like a roach, there's a... There's a a cone beetle, a snail, an erratic snail, a grub, a spiny slug, fly, wasp, all sorts of different kinds of animals, as well as there's different kinds of fungus here. So you can see pink hold, blue hold, green hold, yellow hold, 
different kinds of holds and fun guys and pods and all sorts of crazy crap that you can grow in this game. Aside from the things that you can add to your ecosystem and grow in your ecosystem, there's also different kinds of weather powers. So as you can see right here, some of these powers basically cost a little less, some of these cost quite a bit. And they all do a little bit something else, like this one for instance, causes nutrients to fall from the sky towards your plants or your, your 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 pods here, which are actually kind of dying right now, I just realized, which is bad. Get off of them, locusts. You little bastage locusts. Get over, eat the blue stuff. The blue stuff grows fast. You stay away from that locust. Locust, you're pissing me off. I have a locust infestation right now that I need to get, get rid of. Well, actually I'm using it to feed my carnivorous plants, I should say. Uh, which, yeah, there are all different kinds of plants, which is also really neat. Some of them just kind of grow differently. All of them have their own unique rules to growing. They're all their own different ways of going about things, which you can find out in the research journal. There's also like little entries here that kind of, in a way, present a story to you about what's going on. So let's let's uh, let's hit the pause button again. I'm gonna do that right now. We're gonna hit the pause button again. We're gonna look at different kinds of look at the brown mold here. Basically, it's gonna give you information about that brown mold. What that brown mold. Uh, how it's gonna its optimum way of growing in an environment or that's what it's gonna need where it's gonna do well what its weaknesses are it does a really good job of kind of explaining what each of their weaknesses are what's good about these particular type of plants or bugs or whatever have you and what's bad about certain ones obviously like meteors for instance are obviously very bad they kind of burn things uh, there's a whole explanation of what meteors do here and that's kind of the simplistic gist of the game is for you just to experiment just for you to kind of poke prod change things up and kind of try to get things growing and try to get things going. Uh, sometimes the only way to unlock information about things is to have them be persistently on your planet for a long time. So for instance, you can see I don't have any information on the green, uh, green hold here, but I do, whoa, <laughs> okay, that was weird. I do have them here on my planet. Now all I have to do is just have them on my planet for about 5,000 years for me to unlock that journal entry, learn more about them, and then again, this is all about experimentation. This is about you just having kind of a little bit of fun with it, just kind of seeing how things change, how things are affected. It's not necessarily to, you know, master the game right away when you first start out. It's just to kind of just have fun um, and just kind of figure things out, guys. And things that kind of unlock that in that fashion, that form, basically, by simply, would you leave that alone, dude? Why? You see, you butchered that entire species just about, and now I'm going to have to find a way to regrow it. Oh, there's a whole batch right there. Okay, that's not so bad. I'm going to feed you to this plant. Feed you to this, feed you to this plant. Die, you little bastards. Wasp was going to stink. That's fine. I didn't like wasps anyways. Um, so yeah, basically all you have to do is just have them on your planet for a certain amount of time and then they will uh, unlock that journal entry. And that's kind of the bulk of the game is just kind of screwing around using different powers. So like for instance, let's make a rainstorm. And that'll feed certain plants here that feed off of water. Or we can be, like I said, total jerks about it and cause a meteor storm. You can also spend just one intervention point and have a random effect happen. Which in this case it looks like it was rainfall again. Or something happened there. I don't know what happened there to be exact, but something happened. Holy crap, these things have just eaten the crap out of everything here. Oh my god. They're eating everything, these wasps. These damn wasps are eating everything. They're locusts, whatever they're called. And they really decimated that blue stuff. Oh my god. They're, well, there's a reason they're called locusts. I'll tell you that one for free. Definitely something I don't ever want to have respawn back in my territories ever again. But, you know, if you wanted to, you're like, okay, well, things aren't going as well as I'd like. You'd be like, you know what? Screw it. Let's burn it all. And you could just watch your entire um, ecosystem burn, as you can see. Burn, ecosystem. Burn. That's right. And we just annihilated one of our... Um, <laughs> One of our plant lines right there. You can see the number of diversity is nine right there. I just wiped one of them out. Uh, but, you know, you have that option. It's really up to you how you want to go about things. Not only that, I mean, there's even more complexity to it because they're underneath the surface of these plants. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are nutrients. And these nutrients will eventually get used up. They will eventually die out. You need to be careful in how you plan your ecosystem. You can specifically have... Oops have certain plants put into your ecosystem. 
Uh, so for instance, like I just got rid of the green hold. Let's, I think we could find the green hold again. Kind of flip through the options here. It looks like green hold. We could basically say, well, I didn't want to destroy the green hold. Let me see if I can get them back. And then green hole little pods will start falling from the sky. There's a little, little bugger right there. He's like, -le 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 -le. and he's just going to fall slowly to the earth. We've used all of our intervention points, though. But you get more intervention points by, of course, time passing. And there's one thing I will say, the other thing I do like about uh, Earth Tongue here is there's a lot of options to pass time. So as you can see right there, I'm just hitting super fast forward. Things are going by really fast. And this is kind of just a way of just seeing how your ecosystem performs in a very quick fashion. Uh, which in this case, it looks like, uh, you know, it's, it's going okay. It could be better. It could be going worse. Uh, Greenhold going at stake. It didn't work out. They did not catch on. Poor little guys. We'll grab these guys' body and feed them to the plants. There you go. Uh, and that kind of is kind of the basic gist of Earth Tongue. That's how you play Earth Tongue. It's a game that isn't necessarily going to lose. I mean, there is a way of losing, which I guess it would be in this case your entire ecosystem failing and you having to start all over again, but you're always going to be earning intervention points. You're always going to be able to nudge things in the right direction to get things working again. It's not necessarily, like I said, a game you can lose. It just all depends on how fast, what your goal is, and where you want to get the game going to. That's basically it. Sometimes random events will occur, by the way. Um, random, you know, things will fall from the sky. Random, you know, things could happen. Nutrients don't fall as much. Biomass doesn't t you know, take as well, things like that. It's all random sometimes uh, as to what happens. And like I say, it's, it's, this is a good game to have kind of running in the background, just to have, you know, look at it occasionally, see how things are going, and then we just like, oh, okay, I'll just drive a, have a quick nutrient fall happen really quick. Or a rainstorm or something to that effect, just to help things along. I just burn most of my amount landmass by burning it like I did earlier, but I just wanted to show you that there's a lot of ways, different ways to play the game here. I had it on pause there, that was my fault. But yeah, there's just a lot of different ways to play the game here. It's a good game, just like I said, to have growing in the background, listen to it basically playing, and then just come around and occasionally and hit a button, see if things change, and of course you have that overall goal of unlocking all those journal entries, which is not necessarily to say the easiest thing in the world, but the beautiful part is is you don't necessarily have to restart a new game to unlock all those journal entries. You can just simply just um, unlock them by just, you know, playing the game. You can start a new game and have a new different environment, and that may change things. There's rocky terrains. There's different kinds of... Um, my God, so many things are dying now. So many different kinds of uh, terrain that could form, different kinds of things that could change the way the ecosystem works. And that's kind of the beauty, and that's the kind of fun of Earth Tongue, guys. It's not necessarily a high-paced, high-stress game. It's rather simplistic, to be honest with you guys. Uh, and that's why I said the price matches the simplicity of the game, guys. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're not a person who doesn't enjoy experimentation, you may not get as much as you would like out of this game. Man, those wasps are really just eating the shit out of everything. They're going to wipe themselves out at this rate. They're going to eat everything and they're going to die. Man, I will say this terrain is rather large, though, too. Here, feed him to this thing, you little bastard. Come here, come here, come here, come here, you, wa you little locust dude. Why do you call them wasps? Well, wasps and locusts kind of look the same in this game. There you go, he's dead. Here, I'll feed you to this one. There you go. These are man-eating plants, or I should say, you know, bug-eating plants. When they basically eat something, they shoot spores up into the sky, and that kind of how they spread. It's really neat. It's a good way of controlling a uh, population of different kinds of creatures. You can also see there's little vines that are growing into the plant, the earth there, gathering nutrients, not necessarily just from the outside, but from underneath the surface. It's really neat. It's really well done. It, it's it's complicated, but simplistic, which is what's really the, the highlight of Earth Tongue. Is yes, there, there's quite a different amounts of pods and fungi and plants that can grow, and you just have to learn how to you know, create that careful balance, slowly but surely. Let's go ahead and add some randomness here. Let's go ahead. And random. Pink a, pink a shroom is falling from the sky. Where is it falling towards? Pink a shroom. Okay, we'll, we'll let it fall. I think that's it right there, isn't it? Is that it? Let's see. When it hits the ground, it should change the ground color. Uh, let's give it some nutrients. Give it some nutrients. Here's some nutrients. I don't know what it's doing there. Don't you. Oh, you little bastard! Oh, you little. You see what he did? Did you see what this little prick did? What I'm holding right here? You're gonna die. I'm going to feed you to my carnivores. You little prick. <laughs> he totally just trolled me right there. He just 
completely just ate it for no reason. What a jerk. <laughs> Anyways, this at least this is doing pretty well, guys. I, I think that gives you the basic idea of what uh, what to expect from this game, guys. It really does. It's very well made. There really isn't any bugs to speak of, other than that weird resolution control things. Kind of, it kind of has like a weird. It kind of bounces around in resolutions. But otherwise, I mean, it's a simplistic game. It's a fun game. It's a different, definitely different type of game. Uh, it's a more calmer game. Like I said, it's game just kind of like you know. You're doing your bills or watching YouTube videos, and it's good to have there on the side. And you know, you know, occasionally, you know, shoot a rainstorm down or whatever have you, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's good for that type of gameplay, essentially. And I think that's what it's gonna really excel at. Um, and people who really get into it kind of hardcore and looking to kind of master it, they're gonna have a challenge there as well because the ecosystem is not easy to, you know, master as it were. It's difficult. And that's kind of everything I have to say about Earth Sun. Uh, as far as, you know, you know, music and graphics and all that goes, pixel graphics, it's adorable. I'm so happy they're dying out finally. Those little bastards who ate my poor little plant. Oh, my little man-eaters are dying out too, though, I just realized. Oh, hold on. Here, here, come here. You gotta die. There's more of you out there, so you'll be fine. Looks like they're humping the plants. Um, <laughs> the music can be a little... It, it gets a little repetitive at times. But it's enjoyable. I enjoy the music uh, overall. It didn't get too grating on my ears. And it has that little chip tune, adorable graphics and music. It's pretty simplistic and easy to control. I also forgot to mention there's terraforming powers, by the way. You can kind of double click or. Hold on, uh, am I doing the right one? Is it this one? Uh, right click, left click. Those are terraforming planets. Way to terraform planets and kind of change the environment up. Uh, so that way you can have things growing in a particular way. I'm not sure you do that, though. Uh, it's not working for me. Well, either way, you do have the terraforming plants there. They cost you about one point of intervention each. And like I said, it's just a very simplistic game, guys. So, I want to say big thanks to the developer for a chance to check out this title. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, guys, and I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up that tip jar. If you're feeling generous of heart, all tips go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Till next time, guys. Play more indie games.